Ah, there you are. Welcome, class. Today we are going to build the back end of our application, adding a database and persisting our photos. Let's get started. So here I am in the app.js, and we have two files that's in our backend, app.js and server.js. Now app.js will just, you know, set up the express app, very simple boilerplate here, and we're calling server, passing in our app instance, and server is where we will add our routes. So if we look at server here, we have one route, and it's just going to render the application template, and that is it. So let's get started by adding a database. We'll go ahead and edit src backend db.js, and we are going to use sqlize for this, nice and simple, no custom ORMs or SQL stuff, SQLize. And I never remember exactly how to do this, so let's go look at the documentation. We'll just bring these in. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, let's just paste these. There we are. Much nicer. Okay. And a little SQLize and big SQLize. For a big one, we need to give it a database. Let's call it Collager. A username, some fellow named Brian. I don't know why. And password is root. And these come directly from your system password if you've just installed Postgres. And here we go. We just have to add the dialect Postgres. There we are. Now, uh, we also have to use SQLize to define a table, and let's look back at the documentation to just copy this a little bit because this is I'm not exactly sure how to remember these things. Okay, so const, we're going to add a photo table, called the photo, and this has our src and our x, which is an integer, and our y, which is an integer. And that should define our database for us, and or our table, and we just want to add a module.exports, and the main thing here is there's a wonderful method called sync. So we'll say sync. And sync on our SQLize, SQLize.sync, little s, little s. Um, this will create our table and sync it to the database for us. Uh, but it is a destructive, impure action, and we don't want to do that right when we load up the file. That'd be terrible here. Yeah? So what we're going to do is just go ahead and let's bring in a uh, task, so require, da -da -da task, and we will just make a new variable that's actually a task. It's not a function, so we'll give it the type task, and it's either error, or let's just call it con for connection. And this would be new task with our reg and our res, and we will just sync it right there. And when it's done, we'll say then results. And we'll catch any errors with reject here. And that should be it. So this is not a function, but just a task that will run and sync our database. And we're exporting it right here. So good stuff there. Let's go into our application and require this. So here. And we will bring in sync from our DB. There we are. And from here, we want to make kind of a new main here. We want to say first sync. Remember, sync is, a, is actually a task itself. So let's go ahead and map over that. And then we will do these things. So first sync, then decorate our app, then start listening. And there's a nested callback here. See, there's two things happening that are asynchronous, not just one. So what we should do is bring in another task, reject result, and move these in a little bit. There we are. And we'll call our result with this instead of it being an asynchronous, uh, out-of-sequence action here that loves this. And we get to return a new task. So every function returns something, and it's nice and functional. We have to bring in our task from require da -da -da task here. Now, the issue here is we have a main returning a task with a task in it. So if we were to fork this, we do console.log for the error. But here, we need another function that takes that inner task, and we'd have to fork this. And this is no good. This is very confusing. We end up with a task in a task, and we need to solve this somehow. Does anybody know how we might solve this? Mm. Well, have you heard of the term monad? I hear there are spacesuits. I thought they were burritos. Crockford invented them. Yeah, and when he uses them, he can see all the good parts. All the most functional parts. Class, class, class. No, let's go ahead and review monads. Well, suppose we have a maybe in a maybe, and we'd like to squash that into one maybe. Or perhaps we have a task in a task, and we'd like to smash them together to one task. Or even an array of an array of x, and we want just one array, and on and on and on. If we have two types inside each other, we want to squash them into one. We could use this lovely mjoin method to do that. And it will take two things and mash them into one thing. Now, we could do this with tasks, and maybes here, and arrays. And one thing to note is that if you have multiple levels of nesting, mjoin will only squash it down one level. I don't know if you've ever used promises.then or jQuery's map. You cannot actually preserve the nesting because it tries to be helpful and smash them together for you. Uh, so, as such, you cannot get the children's children by mapping jQuery. Very helpful indeed. So we have our task here, a map, and instead of having a task and task after mapping, we could choose to call chain, and that will squash it down for us explicitly. And the big difference here is that instead of calling map, we call chain because we're returning another task inside. Now more practically here, if we we're going to get a user from the server and then map over that user to, or that task to go get the user's friends, we'd end up in this situation, and we can call chain instead, and it will just have one task. The big uh, part of this is the nature of monads, which will sequence two different actions of the same type nesting inward and requiring one to happen before the next. Now, here we have another thing called safeprop, which will grab a property off an object and then pop it into a maybe. And so we can safely walk down an object structure by calling dot, not worrying at all about hitting any nulls. But here we have a maybe maybe, we'll have to call chain instead to keep it one level as we go along.
And finally, with our array example, we have friends, and if we wanted to get all the friends, we could just call Jane instead of map, and it would give us one array instead of an array of arrays. Now note that instead of calling save prop here, we called prop, because we have a maybe in an array, and another maybe in an array inside of that, and we cannot join a maybe with an array. They have to be the same type to be able to smash together like that. So you might have seen chain called bind, or flat map, or select many, or this operator here. This is the monad interface, join and chain. They are all the same functions here, just to be aware of out in the wild. Okay, now that we know what's going on there, all we have to do is switch this map to a chain, and life is good again. We have one task, so we can just console.log, console.log, and either way, it will be logging the success, or the failure here, and we get to run this. Now we've done a lot, so it's time to give it a little bit of a, a test, and what I would like to do is restart our server here, and see if it works. So it's going to run Babel node, and... Let's see what happens. See what it likes. Oh, it's logging out something large and... Ah, there it is. Collager does not exist. So what we can do is PSQL and say create database collager. Just like that. Nice. Okay, let's go ahead and restart our server, see if this works. And many things can go wrong here. You want to make sure you have the right credentials and all sorts. It will log out our error. And there it is. Express this thing on 3000. Nice and good. Okay. So our next step would be to actually add our route here in our server. And we'd like to, let's call it, we're going to take a, we're going to post to save. Um, and here we will take in our request and our response. And let's say our request.body is an array of photos. We would like to persist this array of photos to the SQLize database. Let's go ahead and make a little helper for that because SQLize is not pure. So let's make a little function called create. And we'll require uh, db here, that db. And we'll head over there and make a little create function. So we'll export create. And create is straight out of the SQLize docs, it would say table dot create with some attributes, and then we have a then for a promise or a catch for an error. And what we can do is simply make a function called create, and it takes in some table and some attributes, and we'll call table create, we'll just put this in a new task, to keep it pure and nice and composable, just like always here. And node task comes up a whole lot more than IO because everything is asynchronous. And so we'll just pass in the attributes to the table, and then results and catch reject. And that's all there is to it. We just wrap their interface with ours, and it'd be nice to go ahead and curry this as well, so we can pass in things piecemeal here. Oh, I got one extra parenthesis, it looks like. Okay. And we'll bring in curry from Ramda. Nice and good. And let's give this thing a type signature here. We've got a function that takes in a table and some attributes, and returns us. Let's call it a record. And that's inside a task of either error or record. There we go. We have our create, and we can go over to our route here, and we have an array of photos and a create method that will return us a task. So let's go ahead. Oh, you know what? We should also export our, our oh, we need to bring that photo here for our table because we need to pass our table into our create function. We need those bits and pieces here. So we'll bring in our photo here. And so with, with our create method, let's go ahead and make a save photo function here that says it's just going to partially apply create with photo. And all that will do to this type signature is just chop off the first bit, this table part, and then we'll have the rest of the signature, which will take some attributes to a task of either error or record. Now, we want to take, for each of these, if the re request body is an array of photos, for each photo, we'd like to save photo. Does anybody know what we can do here? We can map. Well, if we were to map, which is a good, good try, I would do this first. You would take each attribute and save the photo with that attribute. And what we'd end up with is an array of tasks. And with all these tasks, let's say task of X here, so with this array of task of X, we cannot know when all of them have finished. We've got a bunch of things we have to fork, or they won't run, and this isn't very good. Does anybody else have a try? We can chain. Well, the problem with chain here is it can flatten two things into one. We can join two things into one, but if you have a task of an array, array of task, we can't join these two things, so that will not work. Uh, what we'd really like is a task of an array of X instead of the array of task of X, and I know just the thing that can solve this problem. Let's say we end up with the type array of task of x, and we'd rather have a task of array of x. Or perhaps we have a maybe io of x, and we'd rather have an io of maybe x. Or even an either of a stream of x, and we'd like a stream of either x. And in all these cases, we'd like to kind of rearrange our container types, or flip them inside out. Now, if they implement traversable, the type class, then you can do so. And what does that mean? Well, they need a method called sequence, or traverse. Let's look at sequence here. If I have an array of maybes, and I call dot sequence, and I pass in maybes of, out comes a maybe array. And... It's useful if I have a bunch of maybes in an array, and I just want all or nothing. If I hit a nothing in there, I just don't want any of it. And let's say we have an array of tasks, and we'd like to know when all these tasks have finished, and we just wanted one task with an array inside of all the results. We can call sequence with task.of. And 
In another case, we have a maybe with a task inside, and we'd like a task with a maybe inside. It doesn't really matter what types you have, we just want to rearrange them. Now you might be wondering why we have to pass in the task.of here. Well, in the case of nothing, we wouldn't know what type it had inside, so we have to tell it what type we like. You remember there's two types involved here. So the inner type gets passed to sequence, and it knows to how to put it in based on that of constructor there. So a practical example could be an array of URLs, and for each one, we can go get them, and we'd end up with an array of tasks, but instead we can use sequence to flip it around and end up with a task of array of results. Now this is a common thing, just like when we'd map and then mjoin, and we use chain instead, we can do it all in one go by calling traverse. And traverse will simply be defined as first map, then call sequence. So we can use traverse anytime we'd map and call sequence. And here we have two functions, pass input and read file, and I'd like to just demonstrate really quickly how useful this can be. So if we pass the input, then we map read file, we end up with the type maybe io, maybe x, which cannot be squashed down. So if we instead traverse, now we have two maybes in a row, and we can mjoin those two maybes. So this kind of container juggling and squashing might seem a little bit complex, but to me it beats the trousers off of all these nested asynchronous things or custom methods, and if you know how to work it, you can rearrange our types, squash them down, and give us exactly the effects we want, and that's what Traversable is all about. So now that we're all caught up on Traverse, let's go ahead and bring this in. Const Traverse from our point free fantasy here, yeah, point free fantasy. And we can simply traverse instead of map here. And I like to call it as a function, just in case we haven't defined this on the array yet. So we'll go ahead and traverse these photos. We have to say save photo, and we have to give it the task.of to know what we're traversing. So let's bring in task here, acquire data dot task. And from there, we can fork this, and let's give ourselves some room here. We can fork this and go ahead and either show the error, which we'll do res.json of the error, or we will send back the correct response here, which is our photos that have been saved, res.json photos. Now, these are first-class functions. However, uh, because of the use of this in Express, we have to actually pass in a function, or else the caller will be incorrect. How lovely this. Okay, next up, we have to go to the front end to add a button to save and actually call this method. So let's give it a shot. Let's go to our collage, and we have to give it a little bit of a wrapper div here, because we have to like one parent component in each, each of its render methods here. And we'll give it a button. Button to save. Button. And on click, on click, we will this.save clicked, and to implement that, we'll have to say save clicked is a, what is it? Well, I think it's going to be an event to a task, and actually, let's just say state change a photo. So we'll re retrieve our new photos back and update them on save. So we can call HTTP post, and we don't have a post yet. We have to go write that. But let's finish this call. We'll say post save this.state.photos is what we want to post. We will fork that, and if it's an error, we'll call this.props.show error, which is all the way back from our app.js passed in. And then on success, this.update photos, just like that. Now let's go ahead and implement HTTP post. Ooh. Oh, uh, hello. Can I help you? You know what you're doing is not real functional programming, right? Oh, yes? And what makes you say that? JavaScript is not a real functional programming language. Oh, I see. And why not? Well, for starters, you don't have ADTs or pattern matching. Well, neither do Lisps, but we use Daggy for that here in class. There are your persistent data structures. Well, like most functional languages, we simply import those. We have immutable JS and Mori if we like. You don't even have proper tail call elimination. You have to trampoline. Yes, like functional languages on the JVM, we have to trampoline. But it's been added to the spec and should be arriving shortly. Uncontrolled side effects. Erlang, Scala. Laziness. OCaml. Macros. Haskell. Higher kind of types. You're joking. Well, I really must be getting back to class, so off with you. Good day. Ta. Well, that was fun. Professor Risby, don't you always tell us this style is much more natural in typed functional languages? Well, yes, of course, but don't tell him that. Well, now, where were we? Ah, yes, and this is just like get, so we'll just copy and paste it, and change get to post and get to post, and it will just take, in addition to our URL, we'll take in some params, and it will be just the same signature, just with some params here. We should curry it, because when we take more than one argument, we like to curry things. And here, all we have to do is instead of get JSON, we'll call post from, from jQuery, post, and we have to stringify, JSON, stringify the params to send them up to the server like that. Okay, and there's one extra little bitty thing we have to do to get this to work. Uh, because we're not going to pass the headers in here, let's just go ahead and make a little global setting that brings in our const uh, ajax setup from our jQuery, require jQuery. And ajax setup, we'll just say, whenever we want to call this thing, we'll pass in these options of headers, which will have a content dash type of application. I can't type today. First day of the new pause. Application JSON. Yeah. And that way we won't have to specify this every single 
call for Ajax for our headers here. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a shot. And we want to make sure to restart our server just in case we had an error, or and make sure it gets that new route. So, uh, see if this works. And it is happy, so let's give it a shot. So I'm going to try pulling in with all my network tab up and everything so we can see it work. Let's bring in one of my favorite, favorite animators is Yuri Norstein here. And we'll bring in some of these things here. We've got these and oh yeah. So we have a, a collage of photos that we like and we want to save this. So we'll click save. And it goes to the server and it posts all our photos and came back with a response of photos. Here's our post data. And it persisted it. Yay! Yay. Now when we refresh, they are gone. Aww. Because we have not yet added a way to retrieve the photos. So let's go ahead and do that to finish up this this uh, little sprint. So we go to our collage and we will say, right when the component mounts, component did mount, we'd like to just go ahead and do an HTTP get to, let's call it photos. And we'll fork that and this.props.show error or this.prop or this.update photos, just like that. So we will right off the bat go ahead and pull in uh, photos and update the state. So we have to go to our server and add in a photos function, so a uh, route, so photos. And here we want to do the same thing as before. We're going to wrap a SQLize method, let's call it all for find all. And if we call all, we'll have to pass in some find parameters, uh, the query and our table, so that's our photo table. So all we'll look at our photo table, use these parameters to do a find. We're not using any of them right now, so that's fine. And then we will just like below, we'll fork the error, res.json error, and we will, on success, we will do a little p's and res.json p's. Okay, close all these out, and let's go bring in, we'll go write all in our server, or in our db. So all will look just like create, and I'm pulling these from the SQLize, uh, docs again, and instead of one record, we return an array, and it's going to take a table and some query uh, object here, and instead of calling create, we'll call find all, just like that, and we'll go ahead and export all, and that should be all there is to it, and we can take this further, we can go ahead and write, you know, find one, and that should return a maybe, a task of a maybe, as it were, and that will allow us to capture our nulls, and we can go further with this whole ORM thing, but for now, this is all we need, so let's go ahead and restart our server, and load it back up, and see if it works. Are you happy? Yes, indeed. And here, we will refresh, and it does not pull back our collage. Photos has a problem. Let's see what it says. Attributes is not defined. Oh, goodness gracious. We just need to rename this to query. <clears throat> ah, laziness. In more ways than one. So we go back, and we can, after this refreshes, there they are. A nice little collage of photos here. So next time, we will go ahead and add some validations to our to our save so we don't overwrite things and we will explore some applicative functors and monoids again during that. So I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.